Michaela is a 24-year-old beauty influencer with a massive following on TikTok, over 14 million followers. She became popular and blew up on TikTok during the pandemic. Since that time, she's done a ton of brand deals. Recently, she was called out and accused for lying in a sponsored post with L'Oreal. I'm sure you guys have seen the headlines. Today, I'm also sharing information about a lawyer on Twitter saying he believes Michaela did not follow the FTC guidelines. Jeffree Star calls Michaela out. It's a lot. You gotta keep watching. This whole thing going on with Michaela and the mascara really just shows me why I love TikTok as a platform because you're not going to come on here as an influencer and insult our intelligence. I agree with this and I think this is one reason many creators stay away from TikTok because they can't handle the feedback. They can't handle the comments because you will get called out on TikTok. Influencer BS that's tolerated on other platforms is not tolerated on TikTok. So I think it's gonna fly, not anymore. <laughs> everybody on TikTok is talking about this scandal and I'm happy everybody is calling this out, but now let's watch Kayla's sponsored TikTok. She's like, you, this literally just changed my life. This looks like false, this is how, what? <laughs> it's this L'Oreal telescopic lift. Look at the wand. Okay, so basically I'm taking the curved side and I'm going root to tip and I'm satin to coat the lashes. And then once you've done that, you flip the brush to the side and you use the hook comb to basically separate. This is one coat. Okay, I'm gonna add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless and I'm not sure anyone's gonna ever be able to compete with this. So Michaela is being accused of applying false lashes during this ad. Also, the video on the left-hand side, I recently just pulled from TikTok, and there is a huge paid partnership disclosure at the bottom. I heard that was later added. That wasn't there when this TikTok first went up. That's what I heard, it's not a fact, but later on in this video, we're gonna read tweets from a lawyer who actually reviewed Kayla's TikTok, and he gives his opinion about how she disclosed and what she did wrong. This isn't personal. This is a L'Oreal mascara ad that she blatantly lied about, and I'll put the video in a minute. Michaela looked like at the end of 2022 with her mascara on. This was a routine. I looked for it specifically. This is what she looked like with mascara on. Very natural, imperfect looking lashes, as everyone's do when you're wearing mascara. Sometimes your lashes are just fighting against you. They're different, like, lengths, and they curl differently. They look imperfect. That's the whole fucking point. Okay, I'm gonna add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless, and I'm not sure anyone's gonna ever be able to compete with this mascara. <laughs> now, I know y'all didn't ask for my opinion because I don't wear makeup. I mean, I do wear makeup, but only like for special occasions, okay? And shout out to all the girlies who wear makeup. You guys look fantastic. But this is a true testament of letting the wrong people get popular. Exactly. How many times have we seen this happen? Influencers have a responsibility not to lie. <laughs> is it that hard? There is enough examples across the internet as to why that testament will remain true. I'm not even going to get into my opinions with Michaela because it's not the first controversy that she's been in, but I'm going to just say it like this. Stop letting the wrong people get popular. Just stop and stop assuming that people are the girl next door, that they're gonna be humble and honest about their reviews or their takes on certain things. You just gotta understand that when people get money, they get greasy. The world is full of greedy influencers and when a brand promises them the world, promises them a fat paycheck, they are tempted to do things and things that they shouldn't do like lying, misleading, and not following the FTC guidelines. We're gonna get into the FTC guidelines in just a minute because Michaela broke so many FTC guidelines with this post. You, this literally just changed my life. This looks like false, this is how, what? <laughs> That's because it is false lashes. You totally added false lashes. How could you think 
we wouldn't be able to tell. Do you think viewers are stupid? I really think influencers think we're stupid sometimes. We're not gonna fall for this influencer BS anymore. We have to call influencers out on this crap. I wanna read some comments that were left on Michaela's TikTok. Is this an ad? I don't see the disclosure. Only a tiny L'Oreal partner label at the very beginning that disappears quickly, so I'm not sure. Yes, I love this viewer's comment because it's so important for viewers to be informed on these things so that we can call this out when we see it. A viewer said, are you lash lighting us right now? Michaela, I've watched you for a long time now. Please don't insult our intelligence like this. I'm realizing these influencers have been insulting our intelligence for a long time now. This couldn't have been the first time she did something like this. I think we're being gaslit right now. Anything for the ad, I guess she totally added falsies. So the comments totally called Michaela out on this and I'm so glad people called her out in the comments. This is what needs to happen. When you see influencers trying to pull some BS like this on viewers, call it out. Okay, you guys, Michaela says that this on the left is one layer of the telescopic curl mascara and that on the right and on the bottom, in her video, she says two layers, but then in the comments, she says three to four layers and tight lining. So let's do all of that and see if my lashes can look anything like this transformation right here. Okay, this is four layers on each eye. The mascara definitely added significant length and volume as you can tell, but my lashes are nowhere nearly as dramatically different as hers are with one layer versus four layers. She was stitching another girl's video about the mascara and decided to try it for herself. People were really surprised that this eye went from this to this in a matter of two coats. And then people started looking into it a little closer. So this was before the second coat. This was done by this username, by the way. And this was after the second coat. And that's when people started seeing that there looks to be a, a pair of lashes on top of her lashes because if you look again there seems to be more lashes in the second coat people then went back and found an old video of michaela where she's demonstrating how some lash companies deceive you with their advertising practices by putting on a pair of lashes and saying that it was done by mascara this is like the icing on the cake the fact that michaela in a previous tiktok told viewers that makeup companies actually do these things to deceive viewers and then she does the same thing she warned viewers about in a previous video. And that's what people believe was done by Michaela in this video. Now let's watch the TikTok where Michaela warns viewers about brands. She actually says brands lie to you. My lashes with this mascara is absolutely incredible. I mean, literally, just look at the difference. So I just lied straight to your face, and you probably believed it. These lashes, totally fake. And that's what brands do. They lie to you about how things work. Would you have known these were false lashes? Maybe not. And just lay it right on your lashes and press it down. Put about five pieces. Then go ahead and apply one final coat of mascara. How would they know? How would they know? This is the proof right here, right? The proof is in the pudding. This is the proof right here. Michaela admitted brands do this. I'm disgusted and we should stop falling for this BS and stop supporting these brands and influencers. I also found this TikTok. It says, everyone is so upset over the mascara scandal. What did you expect? She's not going to get paid big money to come on the internet and tell you the product sucks. This is why you shouldn't believe everything you see on the internet Except for me, I wouldn't shit on y'all or something like that. So I'm also seeing a lot of influencers using this situation to like prove to their viewers, hey, look at me, I've never done this to you. I'm a good influencer. Also, I think it's crazy that viewers almost expect influencers to lie because they do it so often. I found this lawyer on Twitter talking about this situation and he's a lawyer for brands agencies and influencers focusing on social media marketing and e-commerce issues so i would assume he knows what he's talking about because he works with brands influencers and agencies so let's see what he has to say about this situation so rob said let's look at it from the ftc compliance standpoint and you guys know i cover the ftc guidelines a lot on my channel i've called a lot of influencers out for not following the ftc guidelines and i will continue to do it because i think it's something that needs to be done we have to call influencers out because there's no one else doing it 
commentary channels and viewers right now are really doing the work on social media. But Rob said, to recap, Michaela uploaded a video reviewing the L'Oreal Life Mascara. It appears to be sponsored content. It also looks like she applied fake lashes to exaggerate the mascara's effects which led to a surge of backlash. I see two main issues. Number one, ineffective disclosure of the sponsored nature of content and false or misleading claims in the endorsement. The FTC requires that any material connection between an endorser, an influencer, and an advertiser must be disclosed clearly and conspicuously. Otherwise, the ad is deceptive and violates Section 5 of the FTC Act. This disclosure requirement is why we have hashtag ad and the like. The FTC requires that any material relationship that might affect the weight or credibility the audience would give the endorsement. If you knew the review was paid for, you'd consider that when deciding to buy. But it's not enough just to have the disclosure. It also must be clear, which basically means you can't miss it. Here, the L'Oreal Partner Disclosure is in very small font and appears for just a few seconds of the video. That to me is not clear and I would bet the FTC would feel similar. Now to the fake lashes. The FTC requires that all advertising must be truthful, not misleading, and substantiated. In the influencer context, that means that the endorsement must reflect the honest beliefs of the influencer, who must have actually used the product. Guys, I can continue to read this thread forever and ever and ever, but basically it says, don't lie, be honest, and disclose. I mean, that's all you have to do. You have to give an honest review use the product, and don't lie about it. How hard is that? I'll put a link to this thread and all of the TikToks I used in my video down in the description box if you wanna go check them out. I have one more TikTok to show you because it's so juicy. And then allegedly lied about it. And then people asked her about it in the comment section and she said, no, oh my God, L'Oreal would never allow that in a partnered post. And denied it again. Well, this went so viral that Jeffree Star popped out of nowhere and many beauty influencers were talking about this. And Jeffree called her out. It looks peculiar. It looks bizarre. The mascara is on, it looks cute. And then all of a sudden there's a, a swish and all of a sudden there's some extra shit on the end. And we're gonna review this unbiased. You couldn't pay me a million dollars to say this shit's fucking good. You can't pay me anything. Beauty space has changed immensely and there's only a few top dogs now and if they're gonna be lying to everyone bitch then I'm never going away. This is wild. Everybody on social media is talking about it but I believe this is the call out that we needed to like open everyone's eyes to what's really been happening. Michaela's not the first person to do this I'm sure. One more thing. So there's an influencer in Canada talking about this and she brings up an interesting piece to this puzzle. In a huge amount of mistrust that has now blown wide open in the world of influencing. I don't think this specific situation caused all the mistrust in the influencer community. Mistrust has been there. It's been brewing for a while now. This just opened a lot more eyes to what's really going on in the influencing world. Particularly through a circumstance on TikTok. Now, here's the thing. I actually have no true opinion on the TikTok situation, but it doesn't really matter if somebody lied or not. What matters is that trust is now broken. Trust is now in question and that I disagree. It 100% matters that someone lied and tried to deceive customers just for a fat paycheck. That matters. That impacts the entire industry. There are not laws and regulations big enough to protect consumers from something like this. In some countries there are, but here there's a lot of laws around um, disclosure. There's not a lot of laws around, I don't, I, that I know of being truthful about a product. So she lives in Canada. I'm not familiar with the FTC guidelines in Canada. I'm only familiar with the FTC guidelines in the United States. But in the United States, you cannot mislead viewers. You have to be honest with your review and you have to actually use the product before giving a review. I hope we can continue to build trust even in a time and space that that's kind of hard to do. And it's okay that you don't trust me. I just hope, I hope you know that I'm doing my best to do this job incredibly honestly. So like I said before, a lot of influencers are using this situation to kind of sell themselves 
to their viewers. They're saying, hey, I'm not like this. I don't lie. I don't deceive. You can trust me. Trust is a hard thing to rebuild. It takes time and patience. And we're talking about building trust with strangers online. That takes more time than it does to build trust in your real life. So Michaela definitely did the influencing world dirty because viewers are now more than ever looking at influencers with a side eye and we're questioning everything because a lot of influencers lie, deceive, and mislead. And it's true, they do. I think all of these influencers, all these greedy influencers need to step it up. They need to start following the FTC guidelines. They need to learn how to actually do their job legally. They need to stop deceiving their customers. They need to work on really building trust with their community and just be honest 100% of the time. Let me know what you think. I will continue to follow this story and give you guys updates. Leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. And I think you should go check out this video next because I call another influencer out for not following the FTC guidelines, in my opinion.